Hi, I'm Mike. If you look around the ranch, you're gonna see that most of it is empty. Thousands of acres with only antelope and cute little bunnies running around. All of this land is required to sustain our herd of cattle. And although it may look like tons of wasted space, in reality, there's a carefully researched and orchestrated method to our madness. One that is constantly changing and being improved. Today, we take a look at stocking rates and how we figure out how to manage grazing on our Wyoming life. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Please subscribe for more from the ranch. And as winter wears on, and hopefully wears off, we have calving just around the corner. We're gonna help about 150 cows have their little baby calves. And even if the temperature outside doesn't get warmer, it's gonna be heating up around here very soon. I am upstairs, and much of my job here on the ranch does center around manual labor feeding cows, fixing fence, tractors, farmer's market, whatever, you name it. It does come down sometimes to just putting in the work to get something done. And it can be hard work. But today, we're continuing a series of videos from the past where we take a look at the business side of things. So we aren't in the field. We're actually upstairs in our offices. Most ranches do have some sort of office somewhere. Even my father-in-law Gilbert had an office, although most of the information that he used to run the ranch was kept in two spots. His little notebook, which he carried with him everywhere, and his checkbook, which he never left home without. I guess Gilbert had a theory that there was no problem that money couldn't solve. And he was partly right, I guess. It only works though if you have money. Nowadays, like most ranches, you have to play it smart and you have to find a balance. Ever since we put out the cost of ranching video about a year ago, I've seen the same joke over and over again. How do you make a million dollars in ranching? Well, you start with two million. And it's funny, <laughs> and it may be true, but if you wanna make a solid go at it, no matter what size your operation is, there are a few things that you have to know. And a big one, is called stocking rate. Terms like stocking rate, carrying capacity, and AUM are often used in ranching or raising livestock, but there does tend to be some confusion about what they actually mean. In the cost of ranching video, I explained that at the time we had a stocking rate of about 30 acres per cow, and I still get a lot of grief over that fact, not because it isn't true, but it's because whoever's watching it is in an area where you can have a lot less acreage to support a cow and her calf. So I thought what I would do is actually take you through the process of how we determine our stocking rate, something that we reconfigure almost every year, and for good reason. It's, it's not only the livelihood of the ranch, but it could be its very future. We have a worksheet that uh, I've made up to figure all this out. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can get your hands on that worksheet for your own use, so stick around. We get started with definitions. AUM, or animal unit month, and that's the amount of feed required to sustain a 1,000 pound cow and or calf for one month. It's about 800 pounds of dry forage. Now the cool thing about this number is that it is translatable to pretty much any animal. For example, a, a 200 pound sheep would be 0.2 AUM and a 2,000 pound bull would be 2 AUM. For us, our cows average about 1,200 pounds. So any cow out there is equal to 1.2 AUM. Carrying capacity, it's another one of those terms, is the maximum number of animals a site can support over a given period of time without causing an ad adverse effect on forage production, mostly by overgrazing. And then there's the stocking rate, the number of animals per unit area and how long uh, or how many you can have on that area. Are you confused? <laughs> well, uh, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing to be, and it can be very confusing. But once we start plugging in numbers, it'll start to make a little bit more sense. The first thing that you need to know, or that I need to know, is how much forage or feed our cow that 
our cows need, how much of that is our ranch gonna produce? It's gonna change year to year. You can, you can look at an average, but if you're in farming or ranching and you're in that business, I think you're gonna agree with me on this, that the average is not the same thing as the norm. It's, it's always either above average or below. So what I like to do is take a look at the average production uh, of an acre out here and I err way on the side of caution and I say it's only about a thousand pounds per acre. We've had better years and we've definitely had worse, but planning for the upcoming summer, it's a good place to start. We take our 5,000 acres and we take a thousand pounds per acre. So we get 5 million pounds of feed. That's potential feed because the cows could eat all of this, but we don't want them to. Uh, that would cause issues somewhere down the road. So the general rule is that we eat half and we leave half. That takes us to 2.5 million pounds. Out of that, we can say that the cows will only utilize about half of that. The other half, they're gonna urinate on and defecate, trample, they're gonna bed down in it. So now we're down to 1.25 million pounds. Now, of course, cows aren't the only thing out there. We have antelope and insects and the like, and uh, they've been shown to eat as much as 15% of that available forage, taking us down to a little bit over 1 million pounds of available grass. For the cows to eat. I'm hoping this all makes sense. It's, it's going to differ wherever you live. Uh, we have a very short growing season here. Our rainy season is from April till June. After that we don't get much more rain. We hay in July because that's the end of the growing season and we don't get another cutting. We get just one. The grass won't grow back without water. And this is pretty much the same for the grass that the cows eat in the pasture. Once they chomp it off, it's pretty much done until next year. That's why it's important to control grazing and move cows from pasture to pasture once they've taken that grass to the 50% mark. Take half and leave half. There are areas where this is impossible to control. Uh, I've seen big problems with ditches along alongside the roads. Uh, those tend to be grazed pretty heavily, as does grass near water locations. Cows are just going to naturally graze harder in those areas. So now we know that we have a million pounds of available forage on the ranch for the cows to eat. We also know we have 5,000 acres to play with. So that's 200 pounds per acre. And it's not very much. Now we go back to that AUM, the Animal Unit Month. One Animal Unit Month is worth 800 pounds of dry forage. It's 26 pounds per day, 20 pounds for the cow, 6 pounds for her calf. We've already said that our cows weigh in at 1,200 pounds and are worth 1.2 animal units. So by the math, we need 960 pounds per month per cow. Let's use those numbers to get a stocking rate. We have 960 pounds of food needed per month per cow. We also know that we're producing 200 pounds of usable feed per acre. So that one cow is gonna eat 4.8 acres worth of forage per month. We plan on feeding hay that we put up elsewhere on the ranch or bought from other hay producers six months out of the year. So the other six months, she's gonna eat 28.8 acres worth of hay production or prairie grass. That will round up to 30 acres. 30 acres per cow for a stocking rate right here on the ranch. For us, it's gonna change for you. <laughs> uh, no matter where you're at. You might uh, get rain year round. You might be able to get four cuttings of your hay. Uh, your pasture may produce three to four tons of forage, of, of forage per year. And that's awesome. But, you know, everything's relative. Here you can buy an acre of agricultural land in the right quantity for four to five hundred bucks. Elsewhere, where production might be higher, you're going to see that land price go up based on what that land can produce. It's all relative and it makes sense. The nice thing is, though, once you know your stocking rate, you can figure out all kinds of things. Let's say you have a 400 acre field. How long should you leave your herd in there? Well, we already know that a cow is going to eat 4.8 acres of forage per month. We can break it down to a day, 0.16 acres. And if you have 150 cows in there, they're consuming 24 acres per day. And that pasture should be good for about 16 days. This is the carrying capacity that we talked about earlier. 
so you have 16 days before you should think about moving them off and on to greener pastures. Not one single bit of this is rocket science, but it is different wherever you go, even a mile away. Uh, another rancher down the road might have a completely different, different stocking rate than we, than we do. Uh, we use ours to protect our land, to ensure that uh, next year we have something to continue on. And you always have to ask yourself, is there room for improvement? And of course there is. Uh, we're working on ways to improve production of our forage on our land. But we have to be tricky, we have to be a little bit smart about it, we have to conserve where we can, we have to move forward where possible without risking too much. Quick example of that is a few years ago, we reseeded 250 acres at a cost of about $16,000 that next year, we didn't have enough rain to actually harvest anything. So how much of that uh, seed cost was waste. The nice thing about this formula that we just got done using is that it's easily adjustable for different livestock. It's based on a 1,000 pound animal. Uh, a 300 pound llama would be 0.3 animal units. And if you're looking at pasture raising chickens, a five pound chicken, would be 0 0.005 animal units. Make the numbers work for you and know exactly what you have available for your livestock. The smarter we are, the better stewards of the land we become. And that's really what it's all about, ensuring that the next generation has the opportunity to experience what we do every day and have a connection that is like no other. These calculations are performed constantly on the ranch. They help us plan how many heifers to keep back, how many cows to cull, and they're even factored into hunting. If the antelope population grows too high, we increase the number of hunters that we invite to the ranch. An antelope is equivalent to 0.1 animal units, and it only takes 10 of them to eat as much as a cow. Thanks for taking your time to hang out with me today. We have lots more on the way for you as we continue on our journey exploring the ranch life, and we invite you to subscribe and escape your ordinary. If you're interested in a worksheet that we actually use to figure out our stocking rate and our carrying capacity, I urge you to head to the website, rwyomonglife.com, and sign up for the herd report. That's our weekly newsletter. A link for that worksheet will be included in the upcoming issues, and you can use it for yourself. A new episode of The Project List is due out on Tuesday. I hope to see you there. And until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.